Hi guys, so in this session we're going to be looking at the basics of creating a character from scratch, um, rigging the character with a simple rig setup, animating. You can either work along with the tutorial. Uh, I've also put uh, the links to the files in the Discord, so if you don't want to create the character but you want to have a go at the rigging or the animation, or you can just watch through to get a sense of how it's actually done. So if you want to follow along but you're not that familiar or comfortable with Maya yet, you can just go ahead and watch my introduction to Maya videos. You don't have to watch all of them, you can just watch the first couple. I am going to assume some basic knowledge of Maya. So yeah, if you want to follow along, just watch those videos first. So first off, to create our character, we're going to create a primitive, uh, primitive sphere. Um, I'm going to create a snowman character. I'm going to select the object, hold down right click, and I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm just going to drag select the bottom vertices. And I'm going to squash them down just to make it look like our sphere is impacting the floor. Just to deform it slightly, just so it looks a little more irregular, not a perfect sphere. And now I'm going to select the top ones too. Squash them down a little bit more. And that's going to be the base of our snowman. I'm now going to Command D to duplicate the object. Um, change the scale slightly. And a third time, this is going to be the head of the snowman. I'm now going to create the nose. I'm going to create a carrot using a cone primitive. I'm going to go into the channel box editor and in here I can reduce and increase the subdivisions. I'm now going to smooth the shape out. I could use the smooth uh, but that will increase subdivisions so I'm going to use the average vertices and that just rounds the, the, uh, the polygons that are already there rather than creating more. I'm going to position my carrot nose into um, position. I'm now going to add some eyes to our snowman. I'm going to decrease the subdivisions of the channel box editor. Go into vertex mode, I'm just going to make the eyes a little bit more rounded off by lifting up that middle vertice. I'm going to scale it down, position it into place. It's obviously still way too big. Scale that right down. A little bit more. I am then going to duplicate it. Command or Control D. That's looking good. So I'm just going to use the eye as well to create the mouth. Uh, just duplicating. Um, scaling it down just a tiny bit. Duplicating, duplicating again, and that's beginning to look a bit snowmanish. I mean, it does look quite terrifying, but it will look like a snowman by the end of this. If we add a new material for the nose, I'm going to select the nose, hold down right click, go to assign new material. I'm going to assign a Lambert, the standard material. I'm just going to change the colour. We're not going to assign textures or do any of that. We're just going to use colours. Just changing the colours of the materials. Very, very simple. I'm going to do the same um, with the head. I'm going to make it white and I'm going to uh, hold down right click and go to assign existing material, assign that Lambert 3. I'm actually going to rename the Lambert 3 Snow. Just to keep everything organized. I'm going to do the same with the Lambert 2 for the nose. I'm going to assign a new material to all of these objects. Assign new material. I'm going to use a Fong. 
because it's slightly metallic uh, and I want these like coals to be slightly reflective just for a bit of interest I'm going to make some buttons on his front using the same uh, object there we go one more time so the next thing he needs is some arms I'm going to create some arms using the cylinder just create a, sp a primitive cylinder just going to scale that down a bit stretch it out a bit I'm going to go into poly cylinder and increase the subdivisions because I want to be able to deform this into a more twiggy branchy kind of a shape I'm going to assign a new material to this now uh, hold down right click, get to assign new material, Lambert and I'm just going to change the colour to a, a brown okay so I'm going to go to vertex mode and then we're going to be, begin to deform so just drag selecting areas and just deform it so it has a more natural kind of a, a shape to it um, it, it doesn't have to be anything specific it just needs to have a bit more of an organic kind of feel I'm kind of making it taper gradually towards the top so in, not in any kind of uniform way um, and I'm kind of expanding it towards the bottom so I'm going to select a face and I'm going to hit extrude and I'm going to use that to create some twiggy kind of branches so I'm just going to select a face I'm going to extrude again pull it out and that's creating these kind of twiggy fingers so I'm going to duplicate this so that I've got two arms um, so just select the object command or control D and I'm just going to move it into position They're obviously the same object, but if you rotate them a bit, you're not really going to notice that they're a duplicate. So let's push that out a bit, move that over. Okay, so just to add a little bit more interest, um, I think I give him a hat. I might just use the, the cylinder, scale it down a bit. Um, Apply a new material, I'm going to make it green, add some subdivisions, and we go to vertex mode, and I'm just going to deform a bit so it looks a bit more natural. Or it's a little more like a winter's hat than a party hat. I'm going to make the, the end a bit more organic looking, a bit more natural looking okay that is looking pretty good okay so we are nearly ready for rigging i am going to separate my snowman into three distinct sections so first of all i'm going to drag select the head all the components of the head and i'm going to combine them into a single object and i'm going to do the same with the torso now the base is obviously only one object so i don't need to do anything with that and lastly, before I start rigging, I'm just going to hit these three buttons here. Uh, that's freezing the transformations, centering the pivot points, and deleting the object history. It just kind of resets the model so that it's ready to go forward to the next stage. So, now that I'm ready to get onto rigging, I'm going to go from the modeling tab into the rigging tab. Cool. So any rig is basically made up of joints and bones and this rig is going to be the driving force behind the character. This is what you're going to manipulate rather than the actual mesh. The mesh is going to be attached to this bones through something called parenting. These rigs can of course get very very complex. We're going to keep ours incredibly simple. It's just going to be joints between the different cylinders that make up our snowman. 
So I'm just going to give you a little example of how joints work first of all. So I'm going to go to skeleton, I'm going to go to create joints. Now I'm not going to use create joints in perspective view like this. The tool becomes very unpredictable, you don't really know where in 3D space the joint is going to be placed. So I'm going to go into an orthographic view, I'm going to hit the space bar, I'm going to go to the front view, I'm going to hover my mouse over the front view and I'm just going to hit space bar again and now I'm in an orthographic view. So joints work, we've selected the create joints and we can see it's selected here. Joints work by just, you just click with your mouse, you click again and you can see that the two joints are connected with a bone in between. This is what the skeleton of the model is going to look like. I'm going to click once more and one more and I'm going to click enter. This is basically an arm. Now joints work with parenting. Parenting you've probably heard of before. Parenting is a way of attaching uh, different objects they work with a special child and parent relationship so the child object follows the parent but the parent object does not follow the child if that makes sense this joint here is the parent to this joint here this joint here is the parent to this joint here and this joint here is a child just on its own so that's how it works and we're going to put this structure or a similar structure through our snowman that's going to allow us to rotate where the cylinders connect so let's we'll get rid of this this one and we'll create a new one so we're just going to click now we can't see our joints through the mesh so I'm going to turn on x-ray joints here up here now we can see the joints we're creating through the mesh I'm going to click here where the cylinders connect and once more here and once more at the top of the head and we're going to hit enter okay so we've made our joints but they are not attached to the mesh we need to parent the mesh to the joints to be able to manipulate them so starting at the top we're going to select. So when you parent something, you've got to select the child first and then the parent. So we're going to select the joint as our parent. So shift select that joint and I'm going to hit P on the keyboard. P for parenting. And you can see now that the head, the mesh of the head is attached to the joint. Perfect. If you go to the outliner you can see what's going on. So if you go into the joint and you go to the joints you can see that the head there's a relationship between this polysphere and the joint. Let's rename that. I'm going to rename the torso and I'm going to rename base. Cool. Okay, so we've got our head attached. We need to attach the torso to this joint. Hit P. Test that out. That's a functioning joint. Perfect. So we've got the head. Now we just need to attach the base to the bottom joint. So let's select the, the uh, child first of all. Then select the joint. Shift select and P to parent. Let's just test that out. Yep, that is working correctly. So you can see the parent-child relationship. Joint 1 is attached to the base, joint 2 is attached to the torso, and joint 3 is attached to the head.
we've got a really basic rig but we're not ready to start animating yet you don't really animate using joints we need to add controllers these are kind of like if you imagine the strings of a puppet they're easy to select using the joints is quite easy to select the mesh by mistake which you don't want to do generally a controller is separate um, to the puppet and it just makes the animation process easier I'm going to go to curves and surfaces and I'm going to click on a circle and I'm going to use a circle for my controller I'm going to go back into perspective view I'm going to hit the spacebar spacebar again I'm going to size up my circle a little bit if I open the outliner you can see there is my nerve circle I'm going to rename this uh, base control just to keep things organized I'm going to duplicate the circle command D control D um, position it using the move tool position it over the next joint okay that's what looks about right I'm going to create one more on the next joint these are going to be my controllers and these are going to be attached to the joints so the mesh is following the joints and the joints follow the controllers so I'm just going to rename this controller just to keep things nice and organized you can name it anything you want I'm just going to call this torso control and I'm going to rename the third controller head control there we go nice and organized so we've got our three controllers for our three different joints so how do we attach these joints now some people parent them that would actually cause us some issues so we're actually going to use a constraint works similar to parenting but slightly different so it's just a different form of attachment so first off I'm going to attach this controller to this joint so I'm going to select the controller first and then shift click the joint and I'm going to go to constraint up here at the top and I'm going to click this orient constraint I'm going to click the little box to bring up the options I'm going to click make sure maintain offset is checked and I'm just going to click um, apply and it's all done so that first one we'll just check that it's working and it's working correctly perfect we've got a controller we're going to select the next controller shift select the joint going to constrain orient apply and there we go and the last one I'm just going to make sure that works there we go last one select the controller I'm just going to shift select the joint and apply and there we go our three controllers attached to our three joints attached to our mesh that's working correctly so if I go into perspective view you can see how these work you've got to make sure you select the controller not the mesh or the joint and it's just much easier we have a working puppet a very simple rig Obviously there's only three joints in our rig. Some rigs would contain hundreds and hundreds of joints. So this is just a very simple rig. But you can see that it works well enough. We are now ready to move on to animation. So next we need a bit of a crash course in animation in Maya. So down here we've got the timeline. And the timeline works 
if ever you use something like After Effects or any kind of video editing software, it works in much the same way. At the bottom we've got frames, we can set the amount of frames to create a longer or shorter timeline. If I hit play, you can see it plays through the frames. You've got the frame rate down here, that's how fast the frames play back. You might want to increase that or decrease that, depending on your game. 24 frames a second is pretty standard. How do you actually animate something? Let's animate just a primitive, so I'll create a polygon. Move it over here. If you hit S on your keyboard, you can see I've created a little keyframe down here. If I move along the timeline and then move the object as well, hit S again to create another keyframe. When you've got a keyframe selected, you can see in your attribute editor that the transforms have been uh, animated and you're on a keyframe. When you move off a keyframe, you can see that it still shows up as animated, but it's become pink. Um, if the uh, setting is completely greyed out, that means it's not animated. So at the moment you can see just by moving the object, I'm animating the transformation, rotation um, and scale. Now I am only move the object, so actually if you look, only the transform is moving. But if I change the scale, I hit S again on my keyboard to turn that scale setting back to red and it's updated. Now you can see that I animate between those two scales. You can, if you go to the attribute editor and see all of the different settings, you can actually animate pretty much everything. Um, so if, for example, I right click, I can set a keyframe in the attribute editor as well. So let's set a keyframe here for width, move along the timeline, change the width again, right click again and set a keyframe. You can see that now the width is animated between those two keyframes. If you're not happy with your animation you can right click again and go for break connection. You can also delete keyframes in your timeline. You can see now it's just scaling and the width is not changing. If you hold down shift and left click drag you can select uh, areas of the timeline, you can select keyframes and move them about, you can copy and paste keyframes, hold down left click drag and we can also drag to compress or expand keyframes to make them slower or faster obviously. That's really the basics of animation. It's as simple as that. So we can apply these same principles to animating our controllers. Let's create a bit of movement, just a simple idle I think we're going to create. I'm going to shorten the timeline a little bit, uh, drop the frames to perhaps 80 frames. Right, so we're going to start, we're going to select our controller, make sure you're selecting the controller, not the mesh. Or the joint. Let's move along and we're just going to hit S to create a keyframe. Now bear in mind these controllers obviously the circles will not show up in your finished animation so, so don't worry about that. Now when you click on another object you can obviously the keyframes from the first object disappear. Obviously you just need to select the object again to make to bring back those keyframes. If you want, you can select, you know, drag select the multiple controllers and multiple keyframes will show up from both objects. Um, these are obviously individual keyframes, so bear in mind, so they might be only applied to one object. You can copy and paste keyframes across from one controller to the other if you want. So I'm just building up these kind of layers of movement this is really overlapping animation so you know I'm, there will be a bit of movement, a rotation in the shoulder um, rotation from the bottom rotation in the head 
these different kind of overlapping movements. You don't want it to look too robotic, so you know you want perhaps the shoulder movement to end as the head movement begins. Just overlap them, build up these layers to create a kind of realistic movement. It's much like if you've ever done any kind of like stop motion or claymation animations with plasticine, it's very much the same sort of principle. So for lots of animation, particularly if it's an idle or a walk cycle, we're going to want the animation to be able to be looped. So for that we need our first frame to be the same as our last frame. So to do that, I'm going to select all three controllers. I'm going to drag select them. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to apply a keyframe to each of the controllers at the very beginning of the animation. I'm going to and you can see that that's now applied a keyframe to each of them at the beginning. I'm going to select all three controllers. I'm going to copy and paste those keyframes. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them to the end of the timeline. And that is going to mean he is going to return to his start position. There we go. So now he's going backwards and forwards between the start position and the position in the middle. So this animation I think is about done. This could actually be, with a bit more work, could be a walk cycle. I'm going to just turn off the um, the circles, the controllers, in the viewport just so you can see what it looks like without the controllers. But yeah, this could be a walk cycle with more work. This could be an idle. Obviously that's just scratching the surface of what's possible with rigging. It can get incredibly, incredibly complex. Um, well done if you've made it this far, um, and I will see you guys soon.